Good morning and God bless you. We're delighted to have you with us here this morning. Maybe this is your first time tuning in and joining us. We extend a warm welcome to you and trust that you're blessed with what you hear today. We wanna to begin with prayer. We wanna to continue to pray for the direction of our great nation. We also wanna pray for our local region and community that God would continue to open up doors. We also wanna remember Cornerstone Pentecostal Church. And lastly, we wanna remember our brothers and sisters around the world. Maybe you have a special uh, unspoken prayer request, perfect time to make that known unto God. Let's pray together. Father, we love you. We praise you. We worship you. We thank you for the power of the Holy Ghost that has been shed abroad upon all flesh. God, we pray for the direction of this nation. We pray for the influence of your word, your spirit, your people. Uh, upon the leadership and upon the people of this nation. We also pray for our local community and region that you'll continue to open up doors of utterance. We pray for Cornerstone Pentecostal Church. We pray that you'll open up the windows of heaven and continue to pour out uh, your virtue and your favor upon your people here. And lastly, we remember our brothers and sisters around the world and pray that you provide each and every one of them with a hedge of protection. <clears throat> we ask all of this in the name above every name, the name of Jesus Christ, and everybody said, amen. I want to direct your attention this morning, 1 Timothy chapter number one. 1 Timothy chapter number one. We're going to start reading in verse number eight. But we know that the law is good if a man use it lawfully, knowing this, that the law is not made for a righteous man, but for the lawless and disobedient, for the ungodly and for sinners, for unholy and profane, for murderers of fathers and murderers of mothers, for manslayers, for whoremongers, for them that defile themselves with mankind, for men stealers, for liars, for perjured persons. And if there be any other thing that is contrary to sound, doctrine. Wow, what a list. Unusual title, but you're going to understand as we uh, progress here this morning. Why does the church have so many rules? Okay, some of you that are watching need to repeat that with me. Why does the church have so many rules? That's what I want to talk about here this morning. Well, first of all, I don't really believe that the church does have a lot of rules. Any church that is truly apostolic is going to be founded fundamentally on the foundation of the word of God. Okay. Now, I know that there are so many groups that are in our world today, specifically in the United States, specifically even, let's say, just right here in Spokane, Washington, and surrounding areas. There's a multiplicity of denominational groups, uh, interfaith groups, ecumenical groups, so on and so forth. Every single one of them, if pressed or if asked, are going to say that the word of God is the basis for what we believe and what we practice and how we live here. That's very normative for any denominational leader to say that. So if that is the case, why is it that quote unquote Pentecostal or more specifically apostolic church like Cornerstone, why do people think that we have so many rules as a congregation or as, as a group? I would go back to my original premise that it's not the church that has so many rules. It's showing you how closely that particular church or that pastor or that group is following the word of God. And when a particular group, the closer that they follow the word of God, the more it's going to be invasive into an individual's personal life. So it's a misnomer or it's inaccurate to say to 
uh, to, to even pose the question. It's uh, kind of created a straw, a straw question here. Why does Cornerstone or an apostolic church have so many rules? We don't have so many rules. It's just that we're following the word of God. Look at what Paul wrote Timothy, knowing this, that the law is not made for a righteous man. If you're a person that wants to commit fornication, and we are, we are standing on the biblical principle that says a man should not even touch a woman um, that is, he's not married to, but yet you want to, that is going to directly confront what you really want to do. So it's easy to say, I don't like that rule. Or if you're somebody that's, that um, wants to go somewhere that the word of God would prohibit. We are, we are not to company with, with fornicators or we are not to fellowship. We're to come out from this world and be separate. So we're not going to go to a football stadium or a baseball game or somewhere, some place that may appear to be somewhat innocent. But it is, it is by participating in that, there's a form of agreement or allegiance or, or participation. But if I really want to do that, it's easy to say, why does that church have all these rules? It's not that the church has all these rules. It's that the church is living according to the word of God. And I didn't get in this. I'm just talking about personally here, be a little bit more subjective. I didn't get in this to be a halfway Christian. I didn't get in this to just kind of act like I'm going to go to heaven and act like I'm going to really have, genuinely have a walk with God. When I was in the world, and there's a lot of people that I'm communicating that you're watching this here today, it was all or nothing. It was, it was just like, I'm all in. I'm, I'm just, if this... I just pedal to the metal in everything that I did. Everything that I, that I bought into, it was all or nothing. God saw that about myself. And when I got into the apostolic church, it was all or nothing. And so I want everything that God has for me. I want to be as close as I can to God and to the word of God and align myself for the word of God. And so I'm kind of taking a little bit of an indirect approach here to answer the question because people that oftentimes visit Cornerstone, they love the power, they love the liberation and worship, they love the freedom, they can readily see that because it's not available in other, in other places. And then when, they, when it starts to cost them, when there's a personal adjustment or personal cost that has to be paid, to live in that growing relationship with God, to experience that personal liberation. All of a sudden, in that, in that personal transformation or that personal accepting the price tag and, and the biblical requirements, all of a sudden, it looks like the church has got a lot of rules. That's a misnomer. That's not really the real question. The real question is, how close do you want to be to the word of God. How accurate do you really want to be doctrinally? How much God do you really want? I'm not satisfied with just sitting on the back row and seeing a man with a garb, with a religious garb on, and he's going through some vain liturgy. And for me to salve my conscience and say, I went to church today and you're the same way. It's all or nothing. I want everything that God has for me. Notice in this scripture that I read here this morning, knowing this, that the law is not made for a righteous man, okay? Let's put the righteous person, and we are made righteous by faith. We're made righteous by obedience, by the washing of regeneration and faith in Jesus Christ and the act, uh, the final act that he has done through his death, burial, and resurrection. So this, the, the law is not made for us. The rules are not made for us. Listen to this. But for the lawless and disobedient, for the ungodly, for the sinners, for the unholy and profane, for the murderers of fathers, murderers of mothers, men slayers, whoremongers, for them that defile themselves with mankind, for men stealers, all liars, perjured persons, if there be any other thing that is contrary to sound doctrine. 
notice the fact that we get to pray in the Holy Ghost is not on that list. The pray that I get to have joy in the Holy Ghost is not on that list. The fact that I know I'm going to heaven and I have everyday fellowship and communion with Jesus Christ is not on that list. The privileges are everywhere mentioned in the New Testament, but it's not on that list. How come when people say the church has so many rules or why, why is the church so strict? Notice that they are not talking about the benefits that having those per, with those perimeters afford us. Notice that they've overlooked the benefits and the privileges and the wonderful things that we freely receive from him is not in that question because that is revealing that I want to do something, but my conscience and the spirit and what I know about God is not letting me do that because there is something in the word of God that that church is standing on that is not allowing me to do that with a clear conscience. Ladies and gentlemen, the church does not have a lot of rules. The church is following the word of God. And that is where the liberty is. Look at it this way. If you wanna call it rules, if you wanna call it, why is the church strict? If you wanna say the church has all these perimeters and boundaries and all that, the church is keeping the things out that could defile the purity, the passion, and the power that we enjoy on the inside. Hope this has been a benefit to you. God bless you. Thank you for joining us here today. We'll look forward to seeing you tomorrow. Thank you.